Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Steven Sprague, and I'm the director of customer happiness for Under Armour Connected Fitness. Uh, we have a number of apps in our ecosystem, but today I'm going to talk to you about how one of them, My Fitness Pal, benefits from the power of engaging with our community. Uh, in other words, how we use community-minded tactics uh, to engage our users for the long term. So one thing we know is that when people come to MyFitnessPal and start using it for the first time, on some level they're not happy, right? They're there because they want to make a change in their lives and they think that we can help. Most of our users want to lose some weight, some of them want to lose a significant amount, but all of them want to take control of their relationship with food and exercise. So based on that scenario, can anybody guess what our busiest day of the year is? I'm going to give you credit for saying New Year's. It's actually the first Monday after New Year's, so you get credit. But it seems to be that first Monday when it really feels like the New Year holiday is over, the previous year is over, people are kind of staring the New Year in the face and really want to get down to brass tacks about their New Year's resolutions. Uh, so we actually see twice the typical new user registration on the first Monday after New Year's Day, and January traffic is two to three times heavier than any other period in the year. Uh, and we know that a lot of new users join us for the first time during this period, and from the that they do, we think of them as members of our community. Uh, in benefiting from this sort of New Year's resolution season, our app is actually a lot like a gym. Uh, we just don't want it to look like most gyms come March. <laughs> so we don't just focus on how to get people in at that moment of peak motivation in January, but how to keep getting them to come back month after month. So I'm going to talk about how we do that. But first, why do they come through our door in the first place? Uh, so when people are starting out at MyFitnessPal, sometimes they want to look like this, uh, and they think that we can help. Uh, this is actually a real user. Um, the reality is that our members don't all look like this, and definitely not at first. This guy didn't look like this at first. Uh, but we see posts like this in our forums all the time. Uh, people want to share their progress, and they want recognition, but they also want to stay humble. So they start with, OK, I wasn't going to post this, but. Uh, and I sometimes feel the same way when I'm talking about my fitness pal success, but just uh, for the sake of giving you some context and maybe answering that burning question of, why am I listening to this? guy. Anyway, uh, let me give you some numbers just for context. Uh, so today my fitness pal represents 160 million users. Uh, we've helped them lose over 200 million pounds. Uh, we started out operating independently uh, in 2005 in the era of the Palm Pilots, uh, and we were acquired by Under Armour in 2015, and we continue to grow. We started out as a website in English only, uh, and now you can access MyFitnessPal on multiple platforms and in 15 different languages. And we've been at the top of uh, Google Play's health and fitness charts since, I don't know, before there was a Google Play. Uh, so, our, and one number that I'm really proud of is that our customer satisfaction score uh, consistently beats a threshold of 85% for our customer support. So, what is it that we do to increase and accelerate the happiness of our members for the long term? Well. We watch this very carefully, and we do it in a lot of ways, but we always start from that core insight. Right? Our, our members come in unhappy. Will this choice make them more happy? <clears throat> and I realize that your users will have different needs than ours, but I do hope that you'll find some value in the lessons that we've learned and in some of the choices that we very intentionally make to ensure long-term sustainability of both our app and our community. <clears throat> so first of all, we keep it simple. Right? By giving our members an easy, shared experience, we make it easier for the community to grow from there. Uh, now, when it comes to weight loss, the public is very accustomed to being pushed rapid weight loss pills, overly hyped elixirs, all kinds of trendy diets. We try to keep the promise of our app very crystal clear for our users. Uh, the premise is pretty simple. Uh, you use our app to set a weight-related goal, either losing, gaining, or maintaining weight, and then we help you balance calories in versus calories out to reach that goal at a healthy pace. And our aim is to help people to develop new habits. Right? They're much more likely to stay on as members of our community if they can develop those habits, so we try to make it easy. Uh, and we try to keep in mind that the core activity of our app, the habit that needs to be developed, is logging calories. And because we feel so strongly about having our members succeed, we never move our core food and exercise logging behind a paywall. In fact, a couple of years after I joined the company, when we were launching our, our premium paid subscription version, one of our foundational tenets was that we would never take a feature that had previously been free and move it behind the paywall. And this allows as many people as possible to develop the habit of logging. So if your app does a few things, like ours does, it can be easy to lose focus on what that core activity is, or it can be tempting to try to monetize it as much as possible. For us, it's important not to deny success to our free users, but to help them succeed so they'll be curious to learn more and to consider premium when they're ready. And if they do consider premium, they get all sorts of additional granular goal setting and reporting features, uh, and it's there if they want or need it. 
But we know that all our users have to do is log their food, and they're astoundingly likely to lose weight. So that's the thing we make sure they can always do, no matter what else they opt in or out of. And focusing on that core function has powerful results. Turns out that 88% of our members who log food consistently for seven days lose some amount of weight. So we just start with what most people don't know, that you can meet your fitness goals simply by monitoring calories in versus calories out, and we don't mess with what works. Our core function around that functionality has never changed. And learning to use your app is like forming a new habit. So ask yourself if you're streamlining the core function of your app. Keep it simple. When all of your users are using the same tool, they're connected by that experience, so don't hide the most critical feature. I mean, let's face it, our app is basically a glorified food calculator, right? But not messing with that allows us to build engagement around it, and that's exactly what we do. So how do we keep this community thriving? Well, we've learned to bring our community in-house as much as possible. Uh, actually, literally sometimes. Um, since we don't mess too much with the core functionality of our app, that means we get to play a lot with the community features that support it. Seven years ago, my oldest friend from the third grade asked me to join the company that he founded and to lead this team. And I named us the Customer Happiness Team because we get to figure out the best ways to foster happiness among our members. This is actually a picture of my team uh, in my house where I grill for them every year uh, when we've survived our busy January period. So usually about March after we've been through the Sturm and Drang of January rush, they come to my house and I grill for them. And I do this because I really feel that customer happiness starts with our employees' happiness. So I want there to be a day after all of that struggle where they feel like I'm in service to them. And importantly to me, we don't outsource our customer support, and here's why. Uh, my 21-person team of full-time employees is actually similar in size to our devs and has an average, average individual tenure of about four years, representing a combined tenure of almost 80 years. And I'm really proud of this fact because that's not the norm for people in customer service roles, as you can imagine. And that tenure pays dividends for us. It allows us to understand the deeper needs of our community over time. So by having staff that are invested in MyFitnessPal as a company over the long term, we accumulate long-term insights which then help us uh, shape the trajectory of our app. And my team has a huge amount of historical data at their fingertips and in their heads, uh, and this informs our R&D efforts. Our product team thinks of them as representing the voice of the user, and we leverage that in a lot of ways. My team organizes quarterly user panels, so we bring local members into the office to talk to the whole team about their likes and dislikes. My team knows all the hacks and workarounds that our members are using and the features that they want us to launch the most. Uh, as just one example of something that, that my team observed in the community that we adopted officially, uh, we saw that members in our forums, veteran members in our forums every year during the busy January period would take new members on sort of under their wing to mentor them and the, the users informally referred to this as adopt a noob and we loved it so we've actually embraced that and elevated it and now adopt a noob is an official part of our forum experience every January. And honestly working with our community just helps us do our jobs better. Um, and so let's look at some of what we measure to know if we're doing our job well. Uh, like many of you, we of course want to have a fast response time when our users reach out, and we do. Uh, but because we so highly value the input from our users, we intentionally deprioritize time to resolution as a metric. Why? Well, we want our members to feel connected to a human agent as quickly as possible, but it's in the details of resolving their needs with our members that we learn from them and we find out what's important to them, and that helps shape new ideas and new policies that helps our community to thrive. Uh, there are other apps that do this well. I, I know Ultimate Guitar, if you're familiar with them, they have a process they call Human to Human that's really designed to foster um, empathy between their developers and their users. Um, but we see our community as working with us when they reach out for support, and so time to resolution is just not a metric that we actively work to accelerate. Uh, so I'd encourage you all to design and organize not only your app, but also your business in a way that enhances your connection with your community and your users. Ask yourself how close your team really sits with your users, and are you benefiting as much as you can be from their ideas? We often find that the best ideas aren't necessarily our own. Uh, so for long-term better results, integrate your staff and your users as much as possible, which brings us to the next lesson. Let your users tell the story. So here's a story we heard from one of our users whose name happens also to be Steve. Uh, at his uh, peak, Steve weighed 336 pounds. He'd been on various diets. Uh, he'd only managed to ever lose about 60 of those pounds, and he kept gaining them back. Uh, his doctor told Steve that he was very healthy for his size, but that that wasn't going to last if he couldn't drop the weight. And then that doctor introduced him to my fitness pal. Thank you, doctor. 
Uh, so Steve told us that my fitness pal helped him really learn about the makeup of his food, his portions, and most importantly for him, his eating patterns. And once he got a handle on his eating patterns, at the age of 52, he finally reached his goal weight of 200 pounds. Uh, he, went, he told us he went from a size 56 trouser to a size 34. And very gratifyingly, he said that my fitness pal and its developers had changed his life forever. Uh, and like so many of our members, Steve just could not he just couldn't wait to tell everyone about it. In fact, he may have been a little bit too eager. Uh, he got back in touch with us to tell us the second part of his story, which was that now, whenever he sees people making poor food choices, he feels like he needs to jump in and rescue them by telling them about my fitness pal. Uh, so he told us that he uh, even went up to a stranger, he went up to a woman in a pharmacy who he saw loading up on junk food and started to tell her about my fitness pal. And this is when we started to get a little worried. Uh, and this woman quite naturally said, excuse me, are you calling me fat? And he said, no, no, he said, my fitness pal isn't just for people who want to lose weight. Uh, anybody can use it just to learn about the food you're eating or to maintain weight. I just, I just don't want to see you head off in a bad direction. And that actually must have worked out pretty well because these two strangers in a pharmacy actually ended up going on a date. They got engaged and they got married in 2012. <laughs> But honestly, we hear stories like Steve's all the time. It's so gratifying. Um, and when they're shared online, as opposed to, you know, in the pharmacy, uh, they're often preceded again uh, by this phrase. I wasn't going to post this, but our members often use this phrase to make it clear they don't just want recognition, they want to motivate others, right? Hey, I didn't think I could do this, but it worked. And they just love having a platform for sharing their success. Because the thing is, people naturally want to encourage each other, right? And stories like Steve's remind us that it's actually easier to meet your goal if you're doing it alongside other people, right? Just like it's easier to bike or run or swim faster if you're not doing it alone. Um, so our forums have about 95,000 members. Uh, it's a very small fraction of our, our community compared to our 160 million plus members. But the stories generated via the forums are just incredibly powerful in their ability to spread. Because after they've learned that what they thought was impossible is possible, people just can't help share their stories with others. And we're super grateful for it because it turns out that a whopping 70% of our members join the community through word of mouth, uh, according to a survey that was conducted shortly after I joined my fitness pal. Because our members are like walking billboards for us. They just also happen to be billboards who take selfies and post them online. And they've always loved to tell their stories, and so we give them lots of, uh, lots of tools to do that. Uh, we have a robust set of community features that allow members to connect and converse, whether it's our forums or friend features, profile feeds, private messages, or even for some users being showcased in our uh, Victory Hub on our blog. And all of these community services are part of our free service. And we're continually enhancing these features based on user behavior and feedback, but our goal is always to make it easier for our users to share their stories and their success. Uh, just as one example, we observed that in the forums, people were always sharing progress photos of themselves. They were super motivating, but again, they were only reaching that smaller um, cadre of users who were active in our community. So we took uh, progress photo logging and we built it into the app as part of logging your weight. And that's made it really, really easy for all users of the app to share the details of their journey, both inside the app and also on social media. So when you make an app that genuinely helps people, there's really no better marketing strategy than letting those users tell their own stories. So let your users tell the story, but find ways to amplify their voices to reinforce the value of your app. But with handling all these voices comes a certain responsibility. This always makes me feel like Spider-Man, uh, which brings us to doing the right thing for your users and your community. Right. In many ways, we see ourselves as a learning organization. There are many instances where we've had to take a stand and do things maybe a little differently in order to reinforce the values of our users and to help them achieve long-term happiness and, of course, ultimately to grow as a business. So I'll share a few examples. First, people ask us why we don't have leaderboards uh, like Strava, even though they work very well for Strava. Well, the thing is that a leaderboard creates a sense of uh, competition with others that really isn't a fit for losing weight at a healthy pace, right? It's not about who gets there first. It's about getting there in a healthy way. So if we're going to use motivational tactics, they have to reinforce healthy behaviors. So instead of leaderboards, we use logging streaks. There's mine. I'm doing OK. Uh, which uh, has allows me These allow members to demonstrate their personal accountability, but they also reinforce the behavior of what matters, which is logging calories. And logging streaks have worked super, super well for us. People are crazy about their logging streaks. Uh, in fact, they get so upset over potentially losing their logging streaks if they're going to travel, or maybe there's an internet outage, that my team has uh, historically been flooded with requests from people to reset their counters to the right number. Uh, even heard for, even heard from a, we heard from a woman. Uh, this is back before the 
days of the smartphone, so you know, web, web, websites happened at home. This woman was in the recovery room at the intensive care unit. She sent her husband home before visiting hours were over because she wanted him to log on to her computer so she wouldn't lose her MyFitnessPal streak. But anyway, we realized over the years, people were writing into us to reset their counter to the right number, and we never said no. So we actually built a user-facing tool. It allows you to reset your logging streak to whatever the number should be, as long as you know, it can't be a number longer than the number of days that you joined the, the app. But if that number is going to motivate you and that's what's keeping you on track, by all means, set it to what you need it to be. So we try to do the right thing for our community, and it keeps people coming back. Uh, a few years ago, we went through the intensive step of changing all of the pronouns in our app to make them uh, suitable for transgender and non-binary users after this issue came up in our forums. And this is actually really big for us, since the heart of our app, which is our calorie goal recommendation, depends on users sharing with us whether their sex at birth was male or female. We actually need that data point for our calculations. But separating that necessary data point from how we reference a member's gender in the app is really the right step for our community to take in order to embrace long-term engagement and inclusiveness and help more people support their health and fitness goals. And this is an example of how our forum users, while they're just a small percentage of our overall community, they represent the underlying values of the community. And, and we can use what's shared on the forums as sort of a bellwether or a barometer for what the broader community needs. And we can anticipate the broader community's needs to help ensure that they'll stay happy with us. So if we listen to those super engaged users in our forums, the more passive members will benefit and want to keep coming back. So again, we try to do the right thing, and it makes our users feel more at home in the app. We also try to strive to be non-prescriptive about how people meet their goals, uh, because that makes us more inclusive, right? We don't adhere to one particular eating strategy or one particular fad diet. Uh, but one of the things we love to talk about most is how our members achieve what we call non-scale victories. This is de-emphasizing the number on the scale, but, but emphasizing life improvements that aren't about the number. Uh, these are victories like a father losing enough weight to be able to undergo the surgery necessary to donate a kidney to his son. I'm sorry, I got always a little choked up when I talk about NSVs, and I could do it all day, so somebody stop me. Uh, my favorite one, a woman wrote to us and said she had gotten out of her chair that day for the first time in 10 years without pushing with both of her arms. So these are the kind of stories that we just live for, but if we were relentlessly focused on weight loss as an end unto itself in the app, or if we just built every wellness trend in, you know, we might encourage some more people to join in the short term, but it wouldn't be as inclusive and welcoming, and we'd end up excluding people instead of inviting them in. So we don't pass judgment on our members' food choices. We offer insights, but essentially what we do is we create a scaffolding for them to learn uh, uh, for themselves about healthy, sustainable eating. So again, we try to do the right thing, and it helps us to help others be healthy. Really, so much of long-term engagement is about building trust with your users, right? And that trust is built on actions that show that you're listening to them. So while the right thing will vary for each app and for each community, ask yourself, how are we reinforcing our users' values to build their trust? Because showing that you can adapt will signal that you're in it for the long haul with your community. And finally, and importantly, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Uh, we want to model that being fit, whatever that means, is great for your health, but being happy is essential. And as part of fostering our own happiness, we have bread and fresh baked, uh, beer and fresh baked bread every 4 p.m. Friday in our office. Yes, we do eat carbs in our office. Uh, we log them, but we eat them. And boy, about 2 o'clock on a Friday, it smells really good in our office with fresh baked bread wafting through the place. Uh, we also encourage playfulness in our community. Our members come up with all types of really crea creative groups and challenges to keep themselves motivated, like this challenge based on Harry Potter that seems to be working. They're in their 23rd term over there at Hogwarts losing weight. Uh, but if we took ourselves too seriously, we'd miss out on the ability to have user-generated ideas shape our community and help it to thrive. But, of course, there are user-generated ideas that are more disruptive than helpful, uh, hence the importance of community guidelines, uh, like this one that explicitly asks our users not to go out of their way to use profanity in our app. I'll actually read this one to you. I love how specific it is. I won't get creative trying to get around the profanity filters by the use of non-alphabetical characters to approximate expletives or other objectionable language. But. Trolls can act quickly, so we needed to find a way to handle vulgarity on the app that didn't interrupt the real-time discussions. So we deployed our brightest staff to come up with a fix that would replace vulgar words in our forums with the word kitten. Uh, and a shout out to our partners at Vanilla Forums who make this possible. Actually, go ahead and curse all you want in a forum post. It just ends up looking really warm and fuzzy. <laughs> So one of the reasons that we continue to be healthy is that we know when to keep it light, right? It's easy to forget this step, but we put on our own oxygen mask first, right? If we want to cultivate happiness in others, we have to be happy ourselves. So I encourage you to keep it light when appropriate in order to increase the happiness of your community. And at the end of the day, 
these themes that I've shared are really more uh, and bigger than just product design. They're really about culture. So think about how you're breathing a lighthearted culture into the community around your app to differentiate yourself from others. So just like our members share their stories, I'm sharing ours to hopefully motivate others to have sustainable success without compromising their values or their users' values. Paying close attention to how to fuel long-term engagement has had incredible results for us, so let's quickly recap. The majority of our users can show some benefit in a single week of usage because we keep the core premise of the app simple. Our customer support staff stays with us many years longer than the, the industry average, and we have a constant pipeline of fresh product and community support ideas because we bring our community in-house. Letting our users tell the story drives 70% of new users to our apps through word of mouth, and it keeps them there to encourage each other. We don't accept all the same metrics that others use, counting on our most engaged users who are willing to share issues on the forums and talk to our support staff to guide us in doing the right thing for the community. And importantly, we don't take ourselves too seriously, leaving room for our community and our members and our team uh, to shape the culture surrounding our app. So I hope these five lessons have been helpful for you. They're definitely close to our heart at MyFitnessPal. I think if you do all these things, uh, you'll be on a great path toward long-term community engagement. But again, we're reminded that this is the internet, right? And if you're going to drive all this community activity, including encouraging our members to uh, connect and share very personal stories, we have to do more to ensure that the environment in which we operate remains stable and safe. Which brings us back to our community guidelines. I want to take it just another couple of minutes and talk about the importance of those. Because of course we want to encourage people to use our app, but we just have to continually nudge that use into healthy territory. <coughs> And I think you can gauge how committed we are to figuring out these issues with our volunteer community moderators by seeing how comprehensive our guidelines are. And these are just the top level uh, bullet points. Each of these on the site has multiple sub bullets uh, in the framework of I will and I won't. Um, I encourage you to go to community.myfitnesspal.com and click on the guidelines if you're interested. But an overarching lesson that we've learned is don't forget to codify the community part, even if it's messy. It's just like a solid coder can thoroughly debug your product, a really good community manager can craft killer community code uh, that will allow your app's community to not just be stable, but to thrive. And we've thrived over the years precisely because we're committed to maintaining our community code as we are to maintaining our product base. We just, in fact, entirely revamped these in the last year. And it's for that reason that we actually consider our community code to be among some of our best code. And it's these guidelines and our enforcement of them that allows us to have public forums viewable on the web where people genuinely feel safe enough to ask questions and to tell their personal stories. They're the foundation of our creation of a safe corner of the internet where our app can flourish. And of course, our guidelines aren't right for every app, but think about how you can create a safe space for your users that allows storytelling to thrive and ultimately helps your users' lives improve. So when I started working for MyFitnessPal, uh, I really didn't know the impact that MFP would have on members' lives. As a former teacher, I loved the idea that we could educate people, but what I hadn't realized was how much this community would rally together to educate one another. So I only hope that as thought partners in the app development community, we can strive to support each other in the same way. Because just you know, seeing all of these developers who are also focused on sustainable growth, it just reminds me that we're, we're, not in this, we're not in this alone doing what we're trying to do. And I hope that hearing the work that my fitness pal is doing with our community will help you all make the right choices for your users and for your apps. Hopefully you've seen today that for my fitness pal community is not an afterthought, but rather it's core to our business and something that permeates every aspect of our organization. And I'd love to discuss with you any approaches you have for keeping your customers happy in our Q&A. Thanks very much. Hi, uh, Christina Poindexter from Headspace. Thanks so much for this. It's very, really interesting to hear. I know we're in similar spaces yeah. as well, so and it's relevant. It, we, um, we, we ring a bell at a certain point in the day, and people go up into one of our small rooms and use Headspace. That's so. amazing. <laughs> Love to hear that. Um, I wanted to ask you more about non-scale victories. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting, and if you can speak more to how users share these, what triggers them to, how they're rewarded. Sure. Um, so in our in our forums, we have a, a success story uh, forum, and one sub area of that is non-scale victories. So there's like a visual prompt there uh, for people to share them. That sort of uh, people kind of catch on to that culture over the course of. Um, uh, 
experiencing the forums. Um, I actually send a newsletter around to the whole company every Friday. My team curates some success stories and some non-scale victories. That's sort of the, uh, the carrot. The stick at the bottom is uh, bugs that are trending in our support queue and feature requests that are trending. But the beginning is uh, just this great list of non-scale victories. And it's my favorite part of the week. Uh, these get sent in to me by teammates. And I just uh, it just gives me goosebumps every Friday. Um, but uh, people uh, also share them um, in their um, profile feeds that their friends can see. Uh, and we highlight them. Um, sometimes we see really good ones, and we turn them into full stories on our victory blog. So we have a very active. Our marketing team is always looking for great content in our forums to <laughs> elevate and, and sort of share with the world. Sometimes we even go to user's house and make, make videos based on these. Yeah, they're great. And the thing I love about it is that it's you can have a non-scale victory on a week where you maybe even haven't lost any weight, right? So it's not about you have to lose the number, but we hear all kinds of great stories. Catch me after I'll tell you 100 more. <laughs> Hi, uh, thank you for your presentation. I'm Daun from Coffee Meets Bagel. And um, you know, as you shared your stories, there's a lot of, uh, Coffee Meets Bagel is a dating app, and there was a lot of parallels that I was like, yeah, January and all that. <laughs> so that was interesting. Um, I think the fact that you guys invest a lot in community is really awesome. Uh, I, I think as a startup, sometimes it's hard to justify, like, or not justify, or choose, or how to prioritize things. and. Um, we talked about community a lot uh, because dating is also something that's really hard for a lot of people. But um, because there wasn't really a way for us to be able to measure the impact of community like straight into business metrics, it's sometimes hard to actually decide, you know what, we're just going to do it because we know it's the right thing or whatever. Um, I'm wondering if you guys actually have anything that you measure besides the 70% word of mouth, which is, which is important on the impact of community on the business metrics. Um, you know, it's interesting that the, um, the metrics from our community are not really well integrated into our business reporting right now. Um, so we are actually still operating on a gut understanding that this is important for us. We have projects on the roadmap to get that data better integrated and to look at you know, whether people who are active in the, form, in the forums stay on longer term. We just know that they are, because if you go in the forums and you look at the, we, one of the things we put under users' avatars in the forum is when they became a member. And those, those dates go way back. Like the people who are in our, that's probably the best gut metric that I have is is the longevity that people, even after they've reached their goal, they stay in our forums to help give other people advice. So we'll see, you know, members since 2006, members since 2007, and these people are still active in our forums. So we haven't done a really like rigorous analysis of it, but you can just tell from the um, the anecdotal evidence looking in our forums that we retain people a lot in there. Thank you. Yeah. And then it's also a, a terrific source of, of content for our marketing team, right? That's, there's no question that we get a lot of our great user stories from uh, that area where users are already sharing them, and we just elevate them. Else? I've actually got a question. Go. Uh, I'm Nick from Google Play. I think you all know that by now. Um, how do you think about designing any kind of push or pulls into the community? aspect for your users? Because you mentioned how it's a really small percentage of users. Yep. Do you think about, oh, we, we want to keep this kind of, we don't want to over over commit to pushing users into it with UX uh, cues and triggers and stuff? How do you think about that? Yeah, we just uh, just last year uh, started uh, all new users get a, an inbox message in their private messaging inbox that tells them about the community. It has links to, to get them there. Um, so we've seen definitely an uptick in community use since reminding all new users that it exists. Um, we also have uh, very granular push notifications. So so you can turn on or off just about any kind of community activity you want if somebody comments on your post or a friend of yours starts a new post or if somebody likes your post. So you can really manage you know, how much uh, um, push you want to get about that activity. Um, there's probably more we could do. We, we recently put a big effort into in launching our communities internationally. So we have 15 other languages in the app. And now I think um, 10 of those also have active uh, communities that we're trying to grow. So part of it is increasing the, the potential for interaction by, by broadening it across the world. And other parts is we've got to continue to do more to remind people that it's there. 